Hey, YouTube, it's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome back to Movies So Bad That They're Good, and this is also going to be a tribute video to an actor that we just lost a couple days ago, and that actor's name was Rugger Hauer. Yeah, he was a great actor that was in a lot of stuff from the 80s to 90s to 2000s, and I'm reviewing one of his films tonight in, in his honor. And that's the film I just got at Dollar Tree like a month ago, the 2011 Canadian, you know, bloody as hell action uh, comedy, you know, black, black comedy, Hobo with a Shotgun. Now, this is everything you need to uh, know about the movie. Rugger Hauer is a hobo that doesn't have a lot to going for him, except he wants to save enough uh, uh, save up enough money so he could get a shotgun and blow these these crazy freaking people to hell that, that are, you know, like bothering the citizens in, in this small town. And this film is filmed like a like a like a, a seventies um black exploitation like a you know an exploitation movie. And uh, the thing is that you know the movie I guess comes some critics didn't get it. But I got it. I got exactly what this movie is. It's over the top, it's bloody, it's only eighty six minutes long. It doesn't it goes by real quick and Rucker Howard may he rest in peace is great in the freaking movie. There's a lot of it that I enjoy. I love Rugger Howard as the lead, and he's a hobo that actually gets something done. So that that's um more than I can say. Yeah, it says it here. It's a a 2011 Canadian American black comedy ex action exploitation film directed by Jason Eisner. He has a good vision because he knows that he does like what Tarantino did with uh, Grindhouse and with Robert Rodriguez that he made it look like the 70s, and it does look like a 70s film. And it's bloody as hell. This is not a movie to show to any children. Do not let them watch this. It is gory. It's not rated for a reason because the the, the kills in this movie are like a horror movie because Rugger Hauer literally takes his shotgun, cocks it, and blows people's freaking heads off. It's insane. It's more. I think this movie is more violent than the first Deadpool. Yeah, because this came out uh, like six years before Deadpool or 40, uh, five years before Deadpool. But it was filmed around like six years before. This film cost three million dollars, and it only made eight hundred and thirty-four thousand. That is a damn shame because this movie's better than any Grindhouse film that came out after after uh, uh, gr uh you know the Grindhouse uh, Death Proof and uh, uh, what was the other movie um with the zombies um, Planet Terror yeah. Why is it that people don't like to watch exploitation movies? You get what you 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 get exactly what you pay for. You get the blood, you get the language, you get the freaking exploitation, you get the boobs, you get tons and tons of good actors in there mostly, and the film grain is pretty cool. They keep the the touch of the 1970s and the early 80s, and I like that style. You also have the lead girl in this movie is um uh. What's her name? Uh, Molly Dunsworth. She's the lead the girl here. It's a very cute Canadian actress. Um, I think she's uh, one of the better actresses in the movie. And you have the villains who are so over the top. They're cartoonish. And they get exactly what's coming to them. One of them gets his freaking head cut off. He looks like Tom Hardy. You have another who gets his junk blown off, which is awesome, by the way. I normally don't like mutilation of body parts, like private parts. Whether it's, you know, the... The nether regions or, or the boobs or whatever. But here, this guy gets exactly what he deserves. Um, yeah, and also there's a, there's a guy, um, Brian Downey is the Drake. A psychopath crime lord of Hopetown. Yeah, and you, have, um, you also have this guy dressed up as Santa Claus who is a... Who's, um, whatchamacallit, uh, a pedophile. And then, of course, he sh uh, Rugger Howard shoots him in the face. Let me read the synopsis here. This is what this definitely uh, speaks volumes. A train pulls into the station and ends in the line. A hobo, not who you think I'm talking about, jumps from a freight car hoping for a fresh start in a new city. Instead, he finds himself trapped in an urban hell. This is a world where criminals rule the streets and Drake, the city's crime boss, reigns supreme alongside with his sadistic murderous sons, Slick and Ivan. Amidst the, ch the chaos, the hobo comes across a pawn shop, widowing window displaying a second-hand lawnmower, which he uses as a weapon, by the way, which is badass. He dreams of making the city a beautiful place and starting a new life for himself, but as the brutality continues to rage on, he notices a shotgun hanging above the lawnmower. 
quickly, he realizes the only way to make a difference in this town is with a gun in his hand and two shells in each chamber. In his chamber, yeah. That's basically what you're getting here. And it is so bad it's good because of the way it looks. And, uh, you know, just the, 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 you know, what else has D J Jason Eisner done? Oh, Josh, uh, Josh Baker, if you see, if you uh, haven't seen a Canadian movie uh, in a while, this is one to definitely check out. Because it is a film, it doesn't look like a Canadian movie, it looks like a exploitation movie from the 70s, but it's right up your alley. You got a mostly Canadian cast, except for Rugger Howard, he was from the Netherlands. I really miss him. He was just, you know, a really awesome actor. And the trailer for this only aired in, 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 in uh, Canada. It was initially a fake trailer made for an international contest for Grindhouse. It won the contest and it was screened in Canada as a part of the release of Grindhouse. And uh, yeah, there was uh, principal photography was in April of 2010. It's interesting, like this the way this movie is, and it's very fast paced. It doesn't take forever. Yeah, the one thing I don't like is the ending. The ending, I'm not going to spoil it. I don't like the ending to this movie. It's really, it's a downer, and it didn't bo and it bothered me. But the rest of it is really well done. I want to hear the commentary to see what it says. Um, there's two one two commentaries. The one was with Rugger Howard. Thanks. Thanks, Rugger Howard, for this movie. Thanks for Blade Runner. Thanks for Blind Fury. Thanks for, uh, you know, other movies that you've done a split second. You were a treasure. You'll never be forgotten. 75 years old. You had a long life. You lived it to your fullest, and you acted all the way to your old age, and you never, you never became a bad actor. The Blade Runner sequel was not the same without you. I love that movie, but that villain was couldn't touch your legacy. That rain... Uh, monologue that you give in the first movie at the end is legendary but yeah this is a fun movie if you've never seen it and you know rugger howard just passed away i know it was uh, just a few days ago but in his honor i wanted to just review one of his better films when he was older and uh yeah it's a great uh, exploitation movie it, but except the the ending the ending is stupid the critics were kind of mixed on it i mean they liked some of them liked it it got a 65 percent of rotten tomatoes Saying it certainly isn't subtle. Oh God, it's not subtle. Everybody, every guy in this movie is a cartoon, except for Rugger Hauer. Uh, they get blown to bits, and they're freaking crazy, and they do violent acts. And it says, or, or even terribly smart, but as gleefully gory homage to low-budget exploitation thrillers, Hobo with a shotgun packs plenty of firepower. It does, and this is a hobo I can get behind compared to Hobo with a stick. Yeah, you heard me. An old man with a shotgun blowing people's freaking you know heads off and blowing them into oblivion is better than a super powered SJW OP freaking hobo with a stick. I'll take this over that because this is R rated. You're never gonna see this girl blowing someone's head off with a shotgun or with a laser gun or with a lightsaber or with a freaking piece of wood. No, you're not gonna see that, guys, because she's not badass enough. This man was, and his legacy will live on. Rugger, you will never be forgotten. Also, you were the kick-ass villain in the Hitcher as well. That's uh, see, he's got a legendary career, and he will always his legacy will live on through his films and shows and everything else. Badass man. Rest in peace, Rugger Hauer. Thanks for this movie. And thank you, Jason Eisner, for putting him in the movie. Let me see what else he's done. And Canadian directors are good, guys. If you've seen Blade Runner 2049, that was also directed by a French-Canadian uh, director, Denise Villeneuve. He also did a Grindhouse, yeah. Treevenge, which I saw that on YouTube once. The ABCs of Death, he did the segment Y is for Young Buck. VHS2, Slumber Party, Alien Abduction. Rewind This, Turbo Kid. Goon, Last of the Enforcers. Yeah, he's a Death Note. He's a good director. Granted, Death Note was a bad adaptation of an anime, but he's done some good work. Exploitation is definitely a specialty. He knows what he's doing with that. He gets great shots. The film is well... Uh, cinema, the cinematography is amazing. It's funny how crazy and bloody it is, and it doesn't care. The last movie that reminded me of this was uh, the, uh, a, a Nicolas Cage movie that I saw a couple years ago. It was called Drive Angry. That was awesome as well. I prefer the ending of that over this one, though. And uh, I like the lead girl better in this movie than in, in Drive Angry. You know who that is. But yeah, this is a fun movie. See it. For Rugger Hauer's legacy, see it. It's one of his better films later on in his life. 
Thanks, Rucker Howard, for all you gave us. This is that video is dedicated to you and your family. I hope that they have the strength to move on, and you, you left us with a legacy, man. Thanks. And thanks, Jason Eisner. You, you deserve all the credit because you wrote and directed the movie, and I'll never forget it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm tired, so I'm going to just end it here. Take care, and I'll see you in the next review.